The story begins with Alexander Hardigen, who is an inventor dot and a professor at Columbia University in New York City, 1899. Unlike his friend David Philby, Alexander prefers to conduct purely academic research instead of engaging in social endeavors. After his time at the campus, Alexander meets up with his fiancée, Emma, in a public park for ice skating, until they come across a robber. The robber threatened him and Emma while holding a revolver. The robber wanted all of their money, even the engagement ring of Emma, but she could not let him take it, so she fought back, causing the robber to accidentally shoot her. After losing his fiancée, Alexander dedicated all his time to inventing the time machine to be with Emma again. But an error occurred, and Alexander miscalculated his travel to the past, which led him to speed up into the future. What do you think our future looks like? Let's find out in the movie. After four years, Alexander successfully made the first time machine. He returned to the night he met Emma in the park in 1899. After they meet up, Alexander proposes to take a walk in the city instead of the park. Everything went well, at least that's what Alexander thought. As Alexander leaves Emma alone on the sidewalk to buy her a flower, Emma is killed again when a horseless carriage scares the horses pulling a vehicle pulled by horses. After the incident, Alexander brought Emma to the hospital, dead on arrival. His close friend, David, visited the hospital to check on Alexander, but Alexander was too sad about the happening of witnessing the death of his beloved twice. Depressed and lonely, Alexander questioned David why he couldn't change the past. Because of that, it sparked the idea of Alexander going to the future to seek the answer to his question, hoping the future is advanced enough to be able to time travel. After that, Alexander returns to his time machine with a heavy heart and determination to seek answers. Alexander traveled to the future in the year 2030. By that year, humans have grown in technology. They can explore the moon and invent holograms. As Alexander explores the futuristic city, he goes to the New York Public Library, where a holographic librarian called Vox 114 greeted his arrival. Since Vox is a know-it-all holographic man, he interests Alexander with a book recommendation. But Alexander wasn't there to read about books. Alexander asked Vox about time traveling and why they couldn't change the past. Vox was taken aback by his question and insisted that traveling to the past was impossible. Alexander was eager to know even the slightest hint about his question, but sadly, he didn't get any. Without getting any help, he traveled again into the future to seek answers. But when traveling to 2037, the accidental destruction of the moon was due to the colonists. This made the moon break apart, with segments of the moon falling down to Earth, causing destruction. The military is patrolling the city's ruins looking for people to save and evacuate. The military saw Alexander wandering, and they took him by force. Alexander was confused about what was happening to the Earth and was scared that it might not be right to travel in the future. Then the Earth's crust opened due to the collision of the moon fragments. The military wanted to insist on taking Alexander, but they would die if they did, so they left Alexander and ran off for themselves. Meanwhile, Alexander did his best to go back to the machine and travel in time again, but the crust broke apart with an explosion, causing Alexander to push the lever and hit his head hard, losing consciousness. As Alexander was still asleep after hitting his head, he traveled so long and stopped on July 16, 802,701. It has been years after the moon incident, and life on Earth has evolved to a new different species. During those times, the Earth was healed and was once again habited with life forms like trees. Alexander witnessed the time running and stopped the machine, but it wasn't long before he started to knock out of consciousness again. By this time, the human race has reverted back to the primitive lifestyle. After the machine stopped somewhere in the jungle, Alexander was taken by a tribal woman who brought him home and tended his wounds while Alexander was recovering. Mara was the woman who took care of Alexander and her younger brother, Kalen. After a while, Alexander fully gained consciousness and woke up without clothes. As he stood up and dressed, Kalen saw him and ran off to get his sister, Mara. As Alexander follows Kalen to ask where he is, Kalen calls out to the other people of the tribe to make them aware that the explorer is now awake. These humans are the remaining survivors that are now called Aloy. They live beside the cliff of what was once Manhattan. As the Aloy tribe gathered around Alexander, the tribe leader approached and talked to Alexander in their own language. Mara came to interrupt and helped Alexander and the tribe leader to translate. English is considered the stone and forgotten language of the Aloy tribe, but Mara is a teacher that teaches them the ancient man word. The Aloy tribe can only understand small and basic English sentences. The tribe leader said something quite aggressive, and Alexander was confused about what it was. Mara translated it that the Aloy are trying to decide whether they will throw Alexander in the river because they are scared that he might be someone that endangers the tribe. For Mara to defend Alexander, she asked him where Alexander came from. 
Alexander felt awkward with the question, but he explained to Mera that he was from the past and accidentally time-traveled into the future with his time machine. Mara translated something different. Alexander is a wandering idiot that hit his head. This made the tribe laugh, including Mara, but Alexander couldn't be bothered by the misinformation because he knew Mara was defending him and avoiding chaos for the tribe. A few moments later, a horn sounds off, indicating people to return to their houses as they get ready for the night. The tribe lifted their rowing boats and ropes, giving no entrance to the creatures that wanted to hurt them. Alexander resides with Mara and Kalan because they are the only ones that understand him. Kalan asked Alexander about where he came from and what they do there. Alexander was happy to tell him stories about New York, and they share experiences as Mara readies their bed. Kalan was playing with Alexander's pocket watch as Mara gestured for Kalan to go to bed. Kalan was a curious child who wanted to know more about New York. Alexander promised him they would talk more the next day and gave Kalan his pocket watch to look over. Mara settled the pocket watch where Kalan could watch it as he fell asleep. After putting Kalan to bed, Mara and Alexander went upstairs to discuss their lives. As soon as they were upstairs, Alexander was in awe of the cliff village where the Aloy resided. As he looked up at the night sky, he saw the broken moon, which made him realize that humanity had gone too far. Mara offered Alexander to sit beside her as Alexander asked more about the lifestyle of Aloys. Mara also asked about the lifestyle where Alexander came from. Mara offered a drink to Alexander and noticed the flower beside her was rotting. Mara told Alexander that maybe they could find some tomorrow, but Alexander was surprised. The way Mara shows enthusiasm about flowers reminds her of Emma, why he built the time machine. After their talk, they went to bed. As Alexander was sleeping, he woke up with a nightmare following the scared screams of Kalen. Turns out, Kalen was having the same nightmare as Alexander. As Mara calmed Kalen down, she noticed that the pocket watch was gone from where she had put it, but she brushed it off. As Mara and Alexander went back to bed after calming Kalen, Mara explained that everybody on Aloy has had the same dream ever since they were kids and they grew out of it. Alexander was very bothered by the dream, but Mara insisted he sleeps again to recover. The next day, Mara brought Alexander to where their ancestors kept the stones. It was from the ruins of the famous old buildings that can be seen in New York. Alexander was wondering why they kept it if they already had a language of their own. Mara explained to him that it was passed down knowledge to every generation, and she didn't want to abandon the language because it must be there for a reason. It was Mara's turn to ask Alexander a question, a question about why he travels time. Alexander answered her question by saying that he only travels to the future to look for an answer to his question, why can't you change the past? Mara curiously asked why he would change the past. Alexander couldn't answer the question and was reminded of his heartbreak. But Mara was quick to catch on that he had lost someone he loved dearly. Alexander asked Mara again why he couldn't see any older people among the tribe. So she explained to him that they passed on. Alexander thinks it is suspicious, but Mara told him clearly that things are better left unsaid. Instead of dwelling in the past, they move on and remember them by making beautiful things, like the massive wind vane they made near the shore. As they arrived at the shore, Callan greeted them with enthusiasm to show Alexander what the top of the wind vane looked like. But Mara stopped him because they were only there to look at Alexander's time machine. They finally found Alexander's machine a few miles away from the shore. Alexander looks for any damages on the machine, but it looks intact and functional. Mara asked him if he could use it to return and take Callan with him. Alexander seemed confused, but Mara was desperate for him to take Callan away from their time. It was as if Mara knew something would happen to Callan, and the only way to save him was for Alexander to take him with the machine. Before Alexander could decide, the sound of a horn interrupted, and Mara rushed towards the shore and looked for Kalan. As soon as they got there, a creature called Morlocks was shooting darts with black paint to mark their targets. This included Kalan and Mara. As people spread throughout the jungle into the shore, another set of Morlocks hide in the sand to ambush them. They attack anyone and abduct the ones that were marked. The Morlocks quickly vanished underneath the sands as soon as they got the targets. Kalan called out for Mara when a Morlock was on its way to get him. On the other hand, Alexander plans to stop these Morlocks from taking away Kalan. Kalan ran away from the Morlock and distracted the Morlock so Alexander could attack him. The Morlock now has eyes for Alexander and tries to attack him. Alexander wasn't the type of guy that ran away without a fight, and so he climbed up the wind vane and fought him there. No matter how often the Morlock fell from the wind vane, it won't stop. Until they both fell on the ground with the Morlock choking Alexander. But thankfully, Kalan came and scared the Morlock away. Before the Morlock could fight back, the horn sounded off again and they needed to retreat. 
Before they could relax, Mara's scream echoed into the jungle, and they rushed off to save her but to no avail, as the Morlock disappeared in the sand with Mara. Out of anger, Alexander rushed to the Aloy leader and angrily asked him why they couldn't fight back. The leader simply explained that it is the way of the world, when you fight back, they'll take you first. It's like the human race is now the lowest of the food chain. With no hope of getting any answers, Alexander approached the sad Kalan and asked him to tell him all he knew about the Morlock. But Kalan grew up with the same mindset and let everything be, brushing it off without talking about what happened to the dead. But Alexander gave him the courage to fight back by telling him what he knew about the new earth. Kalan explained to him that they are not allowed to talk about where the abducted went, but he knows a place where a ghost resides. Kalan and Alexander went out to the place where the ghosts were. It turns out to be the ruins of the New York Public Library. The ghost that Callan mentioned was actually Vox, the holographic man. As they wander the ruins, they accidentally activate the hologram, showing Vox with much excitement to see and interact with humans after all those years. Alexander was also happy to see him in the books. But sadly, the books have rotten to ashes. But thankfully, Vox knows everything because that's what he is programmed to do. Without wasting much time, Alexander asked Vox what he knew about the happenings on the New Earth. Unfortunately, Vox cannot answer the questions in detail due to not updating the software, but Vox is aware that what was once one race became two, one living from above and the other underground. Both species have evolved from where the way they live. Alexander asks how the underground species survive, but Vox cannot answer. After asking, Alexander feels even more desperate and helpless. Vox told him that the Aloy tribe was just a mere species, trying to survive with no knowledge from the past and no ambition for the future. Alexander was offended by Vox's words, but Vox replied about how much he suffered from knowing everything that happened in the past. Vox even remembered the day he met Alexander. That's when Alexander realized how Vox knew about the Morlocks. Vox explained that one human managed to escape them, and he spent years talking to Vox until he died. Alexander asked Vox where to find the Morlocks, and Vox gave them the direction toward the entrance of their underground caves. After Alexander and Callan got the answer, they followed Vox's direction. After a mile of walking to the east, they found the skull-shaped structure that appeared in their dreams and was meant to keep them away. But Alexander was not like any other Aloy tribe. As they watch the cave entrance, Alexander stops Callan from going with him because it would be dangerous for him. Instead, he ordered Callan to call out the other tribe and make a cloud of smoke so he and Mara would know where to go once they've escaped. After that, Alexander went down to the cave and saw branches and branches of caves underneath. It was like a maze, but Alexander went on wherever he could without getting caught by the roaming Morlocks. As Alexander explored the underground tunnels, he saw a big furnace with Morlocks working and eating. After that, Alexander saw a pile of clothing and noticed Mara's necklace. He looked up and saw bloody hooks, saws, knives, and many more. The scene was too graphic for him that he accidentally pulled a level that activated a plank. Alexander fell down because of his shocked state and into the pool of dead bodies and human bones. He got scared and swam into the corner of the pool. That's when a Morlock grabbed his hair and locked him in an isolated room. As Alexander went down the room stairs, he saw Mara sitting and trapped in a cage without taking her eyes off someone. The humanoid Morlock explained to Alexander that the Aloy tribe evolved from those who remained on the surface. In contrast, Morlocks are the evolutionary ancestors of the humans who went underground after the moon broke apart. A case of telepaths known as the humanoid Morlocks rules over the other Morlocks. The Morlock commander also explains to Alexander why he cannot alter the past. That's because Emma's death inspired Alexander to construct the time machine in the first place, therefore, he cannot change her fate. As a result, saving Emma via temporal paradox would be practically impossible. Because Alexander's question is now answered, the Morlock instructs him to board the time machine and travel back home after he learns that the Morlocks have hidden the time machine underground. Before bidding farewell to the Morlock commander, the Morlock leader returns Alexander's watch after he requests it and refers to it as a memory, implying a connection between them. But to Morlock's surprise, Alexander tied the Morlock's hand with the pocket watch, dragging the Morlock with him. They are then transported into the future. When Alexander forces the Morlock outside the machine's temporal bubble, the Morlock quickly ages to death. Alexander then stops in the year 635 million, 427,810, more than 600 million years in the future, unveiling a harsh, rust-colored sky over a wasteland of Morlock tunnels. Alexander turns back in time to save Mara after finally accepting that he can't save Emma. He released her, fired up the time machine, and jammed the gears of the time machine. 
As they were about to escape, a pack of Morlocks blocked the entrance, but the bright light from the time machine stunned them all, allowing Alexander and Mera to escape. Morlocks are tailing them from escaping the underground. Still, with good timing, the time distortion explodes, killing the Morlocks and destroying their caverns along with the time machine as Alexander and Mera flee to the surface. In the year 802,701, Alexander starts a new life with Mara and the Aloy. Back in 1903, Mrs. Watchett, Alexander's housekeeper, and David Philby, Alexander's close friend, are talking about Alexander's absence for the past week. Mrs. Watchett is worried about Alexander, but David, he knows that Alexander has finally found a place where he can be happy. Mrs. Watchett accepts Philby's offer to engage her as a housekeeper until Alexander returns, despite missing the presence of Alexander. As for David, he went out and bid farewell with a heartwarming smile as he tossed his bowler hat as a tribute to Alexander's dislike of formality. 